views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone to Angel Healing House Radio. Welcome to everyone who's listening in and welcome to everyone who is watching it because as of a couple of weeks ago we went live we went live on facebook live tv and if you would like to watch the show as well as listen to it you can go to the transformation talk radio facebook page and uh, find angel healing house radio with myself claire candy huff and you can click on the link there and as i say you can watch it as well as listen to it. Now to start the show, uh, a couple of shout outs this morning. I'd like to give a shout out to Roger Moore, who crossed over from the physical to the non-physical. I'd like to wish him a wonderful journey across the veil. um, As uh, he wasn't my favorite Bond, as I don't think anybody could have taken the place of Sean Connery, but he did, did an excellent job. And he was a He was a wonderful actor and uh, a favorite of mine. So um, happy journeys to Roger Moore. And um, also a special get well shout out to um, Pete um, and myself, our dear friend, Doug, uh, who is going through some health challenges at the moment. We love you and we're sending you all kinds of wonderful energies and um, and just wishing you, you to be in perfect health. So, today's show will be uh, uh, going on the same uh, theme as the month of May. And actually, I just realized it is the last, uh, the last show of May today. And June will be a whole different kettle of fish. It'll be a whole different theme. And the Posse of Angels haven't, uh, haven't told me yet what they want to entitle June's. But they have told me that May was all about the afterlife and heaven and our one true home across the veil. And today is in no exception. We'll be speaking about the topic, um, which is speaking to your loved ones across the veil. You know, over the past almost six years that Angel Healing House Radio, and now TV, has been on the air, and I cannot believe that this show started in January of 2012, you know, it never 
ceases to amaze me how the posse of angels suggest a certain topic. They channel me the information, sometimes weeks, sometimes months ahead to be delivered on a specific date. And then as the date draws near, they uh, suggest, um, and sorry, and then as the date that they suggested for that particular show draws closer, I, I do begin to hear from clients, from people, from friends, that they're experiencing difficulties and they need direction in, in the exact same area that the Posse of Angels addressed in that week's upcoming program. So months ago, months ago, when they gave me the title, Speaking to Loved Ones Across the Veil, I sought to ask them if they could give me a heads up, um, if they foresaw what was coming in the upcoming months. And this is what they said. The Posse of Angels reminded me that the Conscious Collective is at an extraordinarily important and crucial time of rebirth and regeneration. Now, there are some people that are saying tomorrow, May 24th, is the resetting yet again of the Mayan calendar. And there will be many souls on the planet who will be coming to the end of their physical contracts, and they'll be crossing home to their one true home in heaven. And I call it their one true home behind the veil of forgetfulness. By the way, if you want to purchase this extraordinary book about the afterlife heaven and our one true home, you can go to the Angel Healing House website um, to purchase the book. And it's also available on Amazon. So when they uh, we're at a time where many are going to cross over to their one true home um, and they're exiting at the exact date, the exact time and the exact circumstances that they wrote to exit in their contract for their human incarnation on earth. Now, just an aside, if you are uh, interested in finding out more about soul contracts, the Posse and I uh, um, brought forth a wonderful show. Um, it was the second show in May, and it was called We All Wrote Soul Contracts before we incarnated. If you want to access that show or access any of the previous shows, go to the Angel Healing House uh, radio page, um, Angel Healing House with Claire Candy Hoff page on Transformation Talk Radio, and all of the previous shows are archived there and can be listened to any hour of the day, any time you want. So with all of this in mind, all of this about speaking to your loved ones across the veil, I received a devastating call from a client and a very dear friend that her 19-year-old son had committed suicide. The shock and the profound sadness was absolutely overwhelming. In our correspondence, my client said that she had no idea how she was going to go on with her life. And even though one may have the deepest spiritual knowing that we never die and that as pure essence of creation, we have had no beginning and we certainly have no end. How is it possible to go on when a loved one is physically not there on the earth plane with us anymore? Well, with the posse of angels saying that many others will be exiting their contracts it got me thinking how many other people have had a loved one who have crossed over and they've thought the exact same thing. How? How am I going to ever be able to go on without this person? And they're trying to figure that out. Well, the posse of angels, here they come. They're saying that they wish to remind us that after such a devastating loss, it's not our role to figure out how we're going to go on. All we can hope to do is literally survive in the present moment. All we can do is put our focus and all of our attention on the now to our breath, which will absolutely help us to survive just one more moment, just one more second, just one more minute, one more hour, 
and one more day. And while the posse of angels do not, they do not have the definitive answer to one's grief, they are suggesting that one of the greatest things that we can do is to either walk or sit in the glories of nature and to allow Mother Nature's energies to nurture us through their immense, unfathomable sadness that we are feeling. By sitting in silence, one can then observe the signs that the angels and many times the nature signs that our loved ones uh, who have crossed over send to us. You know, many people see butterflies after their loved ones cross over, um, as this is a sign of transformation. For instance, this friend told me that the night after she found out about her son's passing, she felt an overwhelming urge to walk on the beach. So she took herself off and while she was walking on the beach, she stopped and she looked into the night sky and suddenly she saw a, saw a shooting star go across the sky and she felt tingles and shivers all over her body. She told me then of her son's absolute love for astronomy and that he loved shooting stars and he did a lot of research on them. She never saw a shooting star before, and in her heart, she knew it was her son saying that he was safe and happy, and he was with God now. Well, here come the posse of angels. The posse of angels are assuring us that her son, who had been very troubled while in his human incarnation, was indeed now with God. He was free from all illusions of low self-worth and no longer had any pain, nor did he feel any separation. I explained to my friend that her son would have much to do across the veil as he would have to review his actions in his life's review and to go over his contract with the wise sages in the etheric council. But I assured her, absolutely with 100% assurity that there would be no blame and there's no shame in heaven. Unlike our planet where there is often judgment and condemnation, in heaven there's only love and there's only compassion and no soul is left behind and shunned uh, because of the choices and the decisions that they have made. Yes, her son will have to review what he's done within time, but his first priority when he crossed over was that he would have been welcomed home by his loved ones to make him feel comfortable and safe and secure. Her son is now clear and he'll always be available for her to connect and to communicate with because love never dies. And the posse of angels, here they come, they're saying that um, to all who have lost loved ones who have crossed over, they are saying that is absolutely correct that love never dies and they would have all gone to heaven as the only hell that exists is the hell that we create for ourselves as humans through our self-perpetuated illusion of separation from God. Uh, now, if you want to uh, find out more about those darker planes of heaven, please go to the show that was last week. It was called The Afterlife, Heaven and Our One True Home. And uh, in there, the posse of angels spoke about there is no hell. Uh, there's just that separation that we feel from source, the divine, the creator, all that is God, whatever you want to call that. Um, and that there are murky or darker planes of heaven and those are the next level when we cross over if we're filled with judgment and racism and hatred and anger because like attracts like and you will have reflected in front of you all uh, the same negative or positive um, energies that you have not transformed inside of yourself. Um, so um, I won't, there's lots to speak about. So go to that archive show because lots of people have commented how they found that very to be very interesting. 
So, but on a personal note about speaking to our loved ones across the veil, I speak to my grandmother, Sarah, every single day. She's loving and supportive and caring. She has a no-nonsense attitude. And she's helped me with countless um, hardships and provided me with her unique blend of wise insights and counsel. You know, quite frankly, I do not know where what I would have been without my grandmother, Sarah, helping me. She is my guardian angel, and she crossed over when I was eight years old. When she comes in, I am clairaudient as well as uh, claircognizant and uh, clair, uh, uh, clairvoyant. So I, I hear her voice. I actually hear her voice when she comes in. But I also smell her perfume, which, which was lilac. Uh, and to verify that she is my grandmother, she shows me visions. She shows me a vision of some sort of traditional uh, holiday food that it was customary for her to make on special occasions. <laughs> she is laughing now, and she says that I should eat more as I am too skinny. Well, perhaps my grandmother needs glasses, even though she's in heaven. But thank you, Grandmother Sarah, for the vote of confidence. Although she's passed from physical life, my grandmother is every bit as sharp, intelligent, kind. Woo! Just getting shivers now. She's determined and no less loving than she than, uh, now that she's no longer in physical form and she resides in heaven. You know... Everyone, this, the fact that I speak to my grandmother every day is not unusual, and it's not strange for me. The difference between myself and the many people who don't hear the voices of loved ones who crossed over is that they are not choosing to think that this is possible, and they are not open to listen and receive their loved ones' messages. Now, here they come, the posse of angels are reminding us that probably the hardest thing in communicating with the other side is allowing ourselves to place 100% absolute faith and trust in exactly what we receive. It can't be, oh, I will ask my grandmother to speak to me, but I really don't believe in all that hooey and I don't believe that it will happen. Or somebody who says, I want to communicate with my brother across the veil, but I don't want others to call me crazy um, if they find out. The Posse of Angels is saying that all expectations and all attachments, all limiting beliefs, and especially one's ego, all of this must be released in order for us to open to receive messages from across the veil. In order to open clear lines of communication, one must definitely make this connection a priority in their lives. You know, the more that we make connecting with our loved ones across the veil meaningful and important for us, we are already. It's as if by placing that priority on it, we are already creating the intention and by giving it energy and space for it to have the possibility of happening. You know, the Posse of Angels want to give us some suggestions on how we can speak to our loved ones across the veil. Now, first they're saying, please create a special time and place where you will not be disturbed in order for this to happen. Now, one of the reasons why people don't pick up signs from their loved ones across the veil is because they're too busy. They've got their phones, they're always looking at their phones, they're always looking at their computers, they're always uh, plugged into to TV, to their DVR, to whatever it is that takes their attention away from those signs that our loved ones across the veil are giving us. Perhaps you can light a candle, play some beautiful music, center on your heart, focus on your breathing, and then open yourself to not only think about the other person, but feel, feel in your heart the love for that person. The Posse of Angels wishes for us to remember that our loved ones hear every single solitary thought that we have and that heaven is not up there somewhere in the sky. 
our loved ones reside in a parallel dimension to us, which is actually closer than our next breath. So after we've created a sacred space, the Posse of Angels is suggesting that we say a little prayer and ask to receive our loved ones' messages. Ask for the angels' assistance to help us. The most important thing is to relax and to feel their presence. Now, you can take a piece of paper and write the person's name on it. You can write them a letter or a question or a message. Write down whatever pops into your heart. Sometimes spirit gives us images or phrases or colors or sounds or smells. These are all clues. And the most important thing to do is just to trust whatever you receive. For instance, just as I can discern my grandmother because of her smell uh, of the lilac perfume, I always know when my ex-father-in-law comes in because he was a chain smoker and I smell his cigarette smoke. So the next thing that we can do is, once we've done all of that, keep having faith that receiving messages from across the veil is something that is not made up because they're saying that doubt will be the greatest barrier between you and having clear communication with your loved one. There's no set time limit to do any of this. Certainly, when one has a self-imposed time limit, it starts to feel forced and it stops it feeling free-flowing. You know, whether it's for 10 seconds, you know, while you're stopped at a traffic light or a longer 10, 15, 20 minutes when you're in a relaxed, reflective state. The Posse of Angels wish for, to remind us that there is no time in heaven. There is only love. You know, everyone, probably the hardest block to dissolve when it comes to speaking to our loved ones across the veil is our own skepticism and attachment to what has to happen. And when we hold on to those things like expectation as to how the messages from our loved ones need to come through and to the way that we think that they should come in, we are blind to the signs that they do send us. You know, for instance, I had a client uh, um, several years ago who came to see me as her mother had cancer. Um, and uh, uh, she, uh, in her sessions that she had with me, um, she cried that she had a terrible, miserable relationship with her mother. And, um, and slowly she started to let go of all of the emotional attachments and the anger and the bitterness towards her mother. Her mother passed away five months later. And, um, and then she came and she was grieving. Um, and in those sessions, she, she said, now that I resolved everything, I am so sad that I can't have a relationship with my mother. And I said, my dear, I said, you can have a relationship with your mother. In fact, you can have the most beautiful relationship with your mother because your mother is still exists in a non-physical state. Um, and I said, what did you love to do together? And she said, we loved to go shopping together. Together. So I said, okay, good. Next time you go shopping together, I, next time you go shopping, invite your mother along. Ask her to look for bargains. Find those parking spots in the mall, which are, which are you know, right outside the, the, the door, close to the entrance. And, um, and she said she was going to do that. And uh, I didn't see her for several weeks. And when she came for her another uh, appointment, she said, you wouldn't believe what happened. She said, um, I said, Mom, we're going to go shopping. Let's go and let's go together and let's see what bargains we can pick up. Anyway, she walked into the shopping mall and the first song that she heard was a Dean Martin song. And she said, I stopped and tears welled up in my eyes because Dean Martin was my mother's favorite singer. And she said, I knew at that moment that my mother was with me and that we had a beautiful, loving relationship and that, uh, that I could carry that love with me and that connection wherever I went. You know, for those of my clients who doubt that this could ever happen, 
I say to them, please let go of expectations and put your focus on your eternal connection and love for them and have fun and see what happens. By lightening our burden of carrying attachments to what should happen, we open to the seemingly miraculous, unbelievable to happen. In fact, our lightness of spirit, our divine eternal nature helps us to connect with our loved ones. You know, everyone, the loss of a loved one is harrowing. It's devastating. And the more we can allow ourselves to feel our grief and process this har harrowing sadness, the more the hurt will subside. It never goes away, believe me, but it subsides. And then the only thing that remains is the love. By putting our focus on the fact that our love with them never dies and that we are eternally connected, it, it does lighten our load and it does set us free to create space for our loved ones to connect with us. You are listening to me, Claire Candy Huff, on Angel Healing House Radio, and you might be watching us on Angel Healing House Radio TV on Facebook Live TV. Um, and just a reminder, you can access and watch the show live by going to the Transformation Talk Radio page um, and clicking on the link there. Uh, when we come back from this short break, uh, we'll be speaking more about our loved ones across the veil and how we can speak to them and take some of those calls for those free angel readings. Just a reminder, if you want to call in, it's 1-800-930-2819. And I'll speak to you soon. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Huff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies nourishing and revitalizing you take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release this wonderfully narrated cd provides vivid visualization soothing and inspiring music and an angel's choir that will bring you peace clarity and a newfound awareness visit angelhealinghouse.com today to see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, Angelic Walk-In Angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. You are back with me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio, if you're listening in, and also on Facebook Live TV, as a couple of weeks ago, we went live on Facebook. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the show as well, you can go to the Transformation Talk Radio Facebook page and find us on there to watch the show. So let's uh, take some of those calls for those free angel readings. If you want to call in to the show, it's one 800 930 2819. Let's go to our first caller, Stephanie from New York. Stephanie, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am very. Uh, I... Uh, I loved what you were saying, by the way. Oh, you're very welcome. What uh, What resonated with you about the about the topic today? A couple of things. Um, one of them is that my grandmother died when she was 40, and my mom was in high school. Um, 
and I, I take after her a lot, at least physically and, and in some other ways. And my mom, I think, didn't have a great relationship with her, and I think she's really angry that she died. And she's also someone that has never really wanted to have a very good relationship with me. Um, but she's, And she doesn't really open up about stuff, and she's not very spiritual. But she did say something once, maybe 14, 15 years ago, that she talks to her mom every day, which mm. really surprised me. Um, so it made me, it reminded me of that. And she said that she feels her mom around me a lot, because um, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> and then yeah. the other thing that resonated was my, my boyfriend and I met at a memorial for a mutual friend uh, a long time ago. And the first time I got in a car with him, which used to be the car of the person who passed, and she was only 29, and our friend Alex, I, like, I felt her energy so much. And, um, and it made me want to spend more time with him because I was really sad that she had died, and it was a shock to me that she had died. And, and then there were several times um, for a while where I thought that, you know, we should break up. And I would swear that I would see someone who looked like her. Like, I would somehow think of her. Like, I'd see someone who just resembled her so much um, mm-hmm. and and with, like, a sad face, like, that that would make her sad or something. Right. So um, I felt like maybe there. And I thought I saw sort of her face in my window the night she died. Um, I'm not sure. I saw some sort of face, which is unusual for mm. me. Um, it's very un- unusual for anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not like superhuman, but like there was just something um, that I saw very briefly, and then I found out the next day that she had died suddenly. Um, so a, a couple of those things, I guess, had yeah. had stuck with me. Yeah, um, and there's so there's so many things that happen to uh, to uh, us when our loved ones cross over, and it's because we are not. Um, a lot of times in the present moment, and it's because a lot of times we don't think it's possible uh, that we discount. We discount what we feel. We discount what we sense. We discount uh, what we, uh, you know, you know what our intuition is telling us that is real. Um, uh, but like the Posse of Angels said, our doubt and our skepticism is the the greatest barrier. Um, to that connection to our loved ones across the veil. Yeah, I could see that, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. So did you have a question today, Stephanie? Um, yeah, so somebody said something recently to me that uh, surprised me. I don't know, I guess there's a few different things, but... When you started talking about this, I mean, it reminded me of that. She said that she had the feeling that my ancestors wanted me to do this sort of um, prayer type, like something with a Jure Center to have them enshrined or something like that. Somehow they needed help on the other side. Absolutely. Um, Yep. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, and this this uh, this is a really important topic, and uh, my uh, the posse of angels are nodding their heads. They're saying it's it's a very important time to bring forth um, a channel on this. I did the, I did a channel on this about a year ago, and they're saying it's time to revise it because. Um, um, we, it's time, because of the vibrational um, frequencies and of light and love have increased so much on the planet, and it's disclosing so many things, um, so many lies, so many falsehoods, um, and uh, things that were hidden. Um, it also... Um, it, it, it also is a time for us to go back and heal our ancestral line. They are wait- They across the veil are waiting for this, and I'm just getting shivers all over. So in our in our quiet time, we can actually go back to um, you know uh, a grandmother or um, or an aunt or. Or someone who's passed over that we have not resolved things with just because you know they're not here physically uh, does not mean that um, you know once they're gone the uh, the issue gets resolved 
so that we can actually go back, sit in quiet reflection and go back through the generations and send them the love and the healing that they they require and they need in order to lift their vibrational frequency as well. So what that does is that helps them across the veil that helps them to release whatever issue and blockage that that was but it also frees us it's tremendously freeing to us to go back and clear that uh, that ancestral line of ours oh that's interesting yeah because i wasn't sure but she was adamant that she was getting that feeling of you know in this specific way she wanted me to do it um something with enshrinement with the Jure people, I don't know a lot of my ancestors that passed. I know a couple. Um, Mm -hmm. And, like, my grandmother, who I miss a lot, she was probably the one I was the closest to, has passed. Um, But the others, for the most part, I didn't know very well. Mm. Well, You know what, you know, I was was just going to interject and say you don't have to know all your ancestors in order to heal that line because you think about uh, your own energies and once you uh, bring all your energies back to love and light how many people you indirectly affect in the world by having a higher vibrational uh, light quotient you know light energies and so if you if you do um if you do this with a um, a few of your ancestors that you an ancestral line that you do know, then then because um, you know there is no barrier with energy, then they will indirectly start to affect all of those others uh, along those ancestral lines. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because they know yep. the other ones that passed. Yes, they okay. know. They know. They know everybody. <laughs> Once you cross over, there is nothing to hide. <laughs> Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and then the other thing, I was so I went to this uh, Reiki circle at Cancer Care last week. I go once a month and for like 14 years now. And, you know, I'm still having a lot of issues with my foot and with the pain. And my friend who leads, who leads the group um, was putting some energy, you know, giving me some Reiki to my foot after the, after the class. And she said that I was, like, holding a lot of stuff there, like childhood trauma. And mm-hmm. and I said, yeah, I heard that, that we do that because it's, like, as far away from our head as possible and we, when we have trouble, so it'll go to our feet. And yeah. then, you know, she did this sort of thing to ask, you know, some help from my angels and guides to help me start to feel or sense one of the things that were there and in a safe way for me. And I started to feel a step-grandfather like, really strong, but, like, sort of, like, in a violating way. And that surprised me. So then I wondered if he was one of the ones that needed the help, too, and if that's why he sort of came through in that moment or, or you know, what that was about. But it was so interesting. It was kind of like what you are describing, where it wasn't maybe... There was a little bit of a smell of, like, maybe the cigarettes that my son uh, noticed, but, like, I really felt, like the energy, and I and he probably died when I was maybe seven, eight, nine, somewhere in there, mm-hmm. so it's been yeah, a long yeah. time, but it's now there, so yeah. real. They're, they're also saying, uh, the posse of angels are saying, yes, um, he, he did need, he does need um, that healing, um, and they're also saying that it was a different generation back then, it was a, a darker, more heavier uh, energy that was on the planet, and those um, you know uh, dark deeds, those uh, things that were done, um, you know, it, it the, a lot of things were co- uh, covered up. People hadn't you know even addressed their own issues, um, and for the most part, they were blindly acting out anger, sadness, bitterness, resentment, regret, all the abuse that had been done to them. And so, um, in just knowing this, in just knowing this, and having a sense of something that might have happened, all you need to do is bless him, surround him in that green healing light, surround him in that un pink unconditional love and to send healing back to that generational line and it it's amazing how that will lift the energies and will lighten them mm. yeah. yeah yeah i don't have any ill will towards them so i could do that it kind of 
maybe is a surprise too. But, um, yeah, exactly. Okay. So I can I can call some cards for uh, for a general read and uh, and see what comes up. Okay, let's go oh, to sure. the card. Well, could you? Okay. Yep. Go on, Steph. Oh well, I was wondering when I thought I was seeing or sensing my friend Alex like during those times with Chris. Um, was that really her? Or was that me just sort of imagining it? Well, uh, like, uh, I, I'm, getting, like I'm, ge- I, I'm getting I'm I'm getting a yes, um, and. And they're saying yes. Um, a lot of times um, when a person, um, how, how long had it been since she crossed over? Well, when it, when it was really happening, it was probably in the first year, uh, yeah, first year or two. I haven't, it hasn't really happened in a long time, but it did happen maybe once recently, I think in the fall. Um, but, like, I thought I saw her, like, when I got off the subway once, this woman walked past me that was just like her, and at her memorial, I thought I saw her. And we weren't even very, very close friends. Like, I, I would have thought maybe if I were to see anyone, it would be my grandmother during that time. But right. I was very, very affected by her death. Like, I was deeply affected by it. And right. I sort of felt this guilt, you know, and, oh, I should have spent more time with her, you know, and all of that. Um, maybe yeah. I could have helped her. Yeah. that could have prevented this. I went through a really tough time with it, but well, um, yeah. it was the first I was going to say a lot of yeah. times, a lot of times when in the early stages um, or the early time period after a person passes, um, you know, people get a lot of messages then and uh, uh, sightings, um, feelings, sensing them around. And then oh, I'm just getting shivers now. Um, <laughs> this is not the case with my yeah. dad. My my dad is all over me like a rash every every second of the day. He's 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 like Peter Pan. Man, and <laughs> any opportunity he can come to stick his nose in and wave his magic wand, he's here. But um, but this is not the case with a lot of a lot of people that cross over, a lot of souls who cross over, which people can feel very strongly, um, imminently, in, in, within the first uh, couple of months, six months to a year, and then then that starts to fade. Then that's not as strong. Um, uh, certainly, the posse of angels are saying what what keeps that connection so strong is often the grieving is like the person, you know, wants to hold on to that person and not let them go. And so um, then over time, although we never get over, we never get over uh, losing a loved one that over time it, it does get uh, easier. We do start thinking about other things. We do start living uh, our lives again, um, and then it doesn't become as strong over time. But um, uh, but but they're saying yes, that was Alex. Oh, that that makes us kind of sweet. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. She's she's a very sweet energy, actually. Boy, am I getting shocks now. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's very very kind, very sweet, yeah. and. Uh, and she she says that it's a very important uh, relationship that you have with your boyfriend, um, important in the way for your soul's growth and for his growth as well. Yeah, I believe that. I really felt like she was really discouraging me from breaking up with him every time I thought about it. <laughs> like she really. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like, no, you guys have to stay together. You know, yeah, for what, yeah, for what, funny. yeah, for whatever reason, it's uh, sometimes you know we get in our way and uh, and uh, and you know we muddy, um, trying to figure things out rather than just allowing them to evolve. Um, I'm pulling cards from uh, this mystical oracle deck. Um, it's not a tarot deck as such, but I've had such wonderful uh, readings with it. Um, and the first one, because we're talking about, we're speaking about Alex, this one is memories. Cherish memories mm-hmm. of loved ones. It actually says cherish memories of loved ones. Now, how weirdo is that? I mean, come on, you can't, you can't script this stuff. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't choose this before, and it shows um, shows a, a lovely girl there, um, and she's uh, she's in quiet reflection, and uh, she's thinking about all those beautiful memories that she have with the loved ones. You know, when we do cross over, 
all we have is our love and all we have is our memories. Um, you know, we leave everything else at the gate. Um, and, uh, and the more rich in, in love and positive memories that we, that we have, we plant gardens. We plant gardens and fields of poppies and, and, and beautiful flowers and beautiful um, fields of color with our beautiful memories. It reminds me of the movie What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams, which is one of my favorite movies, and it truly does depict uh, what we are capable of with our thoughts and our energies in heaven. So this is definitely, that. that, that is Alex. That is Alex. Mm-hmm. Memories, memories of our loved ones. Um, whether it's she that's, that's saying this to me or the posse of angels, they're saying you have had lifetimes with her before and lifetimes of incarnations um, and, uh, and you've helped each other. Um, and so she is helping you across the veil. Um, she feels like, in many ways, she feels kind of like a sister to you. Like, yeah, a sis- yeah. like a sister, like a sister energy. So they're saying, um, they're saying, beloved Stephanie, take time out to welcome, to welcome Alex into your life. That's that card is just that it just blows me away that we're speaking about that and that one came up. Um, okay, the next card that's coming up for you is the letting go card. Learn to let go, and that's interesting because we were speaking about um, letting go of expectations and attachments as to how this needs to come in for you. You know, so much, so many of us, um, you know, when we're speaking to our loved ones across the veil, you know, we're saying, okay, you know, we put forth a question uh, or, um, or a message, and then we sit there and that person may be trying to contact us um, in a different way than we expect, and we totally miss the forest for the trees. You know, we miss the signs that they're giving us. Um, So they're saying with this reconnection to Alex, um, you know, cherish those memories that you've had together. Um, You can actually sit and you can ask Alex to, uh, to show you or to bring to mind or to heart those things that you did share in the past um, and just let go and open up to that beautiful connection with spirit. And the last card for you, Stephanie, is, I love this, let things happen, go with the flow. I, you can't make this stuff up with, you know, go with the flow. <laughs> Go with the flow. <laughs> the, this beautiful girl riding those um, dolphins with butterfly. Actually, they look like sardines with butterfly wings. We were just talking about butterflies, and butterflies are a sign of transformation and people crossing over. So um, I'm so glad you called in today and reminded me about the ancestral line healing and uh, how Alex came in and uh, has been a part of your reading today. So I hope that's been helpful. Yeah, I like. I'm a little bit misty eyed. So it's very <laughs> well, uh, well, have a wonderful reconnection with Alex and uh, enjoy each other's company. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take and care it, and have it's an also absolutely really reassuring. Day. It is. Me it's too. very. Re- it's very reassuring, and we never, we never get fully get over the grief. I said to somebody. Um, that uh, grieving is like the waves of an ocean. You know, sometimes the waves um, are very minor, you know, and they're, and then we can deal with it. And then we hear a song that we shared with that person. Um, my dad, I listen to the classical radio station, and sometimes those songs come in that we danced to as when I was a child, um, that we loved, and I just find myself mm-hmm. crying. And then sometimes the waves of the ocean crash upon us. Never really goes away, but it softens over time. Um, and then all that's left is the love. <laughs> so sweet. have a beautiful day, Stephanie. Thank you, as always, for calling in. Thank you. Thank you Bye. so much for everything you do. Have a good day. Bye. What a beautiful Beautiful message from Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you for reminding us about the ancestral line and, uh, and uh, you know, saying that uh, those, those loved ones across the veil, they're always with us. 
They're always, always with us. We have uh, a few moments left uh, before we sign off for today. And uh, it is uh, quite a momentous time um, on the planet, as the Posse of Angels spoke about, with it being um, a, a very important time of rebirth and regeneration, not just because it's spring. But uh, some people say that the May 24th date tomorrow is extraordinarily important. Um, it's the like a resetting of the Mayan calendar and um, almost as important as December 12, 12, 2012 date uh, that uh, that we were all excitedly anticipating. And then it seems that what's happened from 2012 to 2000, May 2012, 2017 is even more unbelievable with all the reveals and all the the uh, hidden things are coming to light. So just going to pull three cards for this last week in May and into June, just to oh, it was a bit loud, just to give us a heads up of uh, of what we can expect and just give us a few messages of clarity. Okay, first card that's coming out for us is. The is the Six of Cups. Uh, the Six of Cups card, this is beautiful. I'm using the Victorian tarot deck, uh, and it has little fairies on it. Um, and the Six of Cups is uh, the card of nostalgia. It is the card of memories. Um, it's the card of uh, remembering fondly um, those people from our past and bringing into alignment anything that is not... Uh, of love and light as we all have contracted to um, have certain roles with these people. Um, and now uh, now that we, uh, we have come to this date, we can uh, mend fences, we can send them love and send them healing and forgiveness, which is, uh, which is a wonderful thing for our own soul. Also, this is telling us that people from our past will be coming back to help us with our, um, with our endeavors and our projects and to open up to receive them without expectation. The next one is the temperance card, is the balance card, and they are saying that, uh, that things will balance out for so many of us as we move into June, as we move into the summer months. And, uh, and the last card is the empress card, and the empress card is about creativity and anchoring and grounding that cre those creative efforts uh, of ours into the physical plane. Um, and so they're saying that, uh, that uh, the physical manifestation of our dreams, of our wishes, of our intentions, of all of those things that we've held in our hearts for a very long time will start showing up for us once we get into June, into those summer months. And the Posse of Angels are using the word summer harvest. So many of us will be seeing that summer harvest. One last card from our, uh, our mystical tarot deck, which brought forth such loving memories and uh, loving messages for Stephanie from Alex on the other side. Okay, just a bit of a shuffle here. Let's see what comes up. One, two, okay, this one. Express your sensuality. There's a beautiful lady, and she's free-flowing, beautiful rainbow energies. There's a pegasus. Sensuality has so much more to do with our senses of, of feeling life, of sensing life, of, of uh, experiencing life. And don't ever be afraid to show your true authentic self and to really experience life. Um, the Posse of Angels and I have said so many times that life was never meant to be figured out. It was meant to be experienced. So go forth and experience an extraordinary life. That just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you for my caller. Thank you for Stephanie calling in. Thank you to everyone who's listening. 
on the Transformation Talk Radio platform to Angel Healing House Radio. Remember that Angel, and also those who are watching it on Facebook Live TV, remember that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week at, on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Transformation Talk Radio. If you would like to order those amazing books, One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, Angels of Faith, and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, please do go to the Angel Healing House website, which is three W's, angelhealinghouse.com. And until next time, everyone, please do allow your radiant light to shine forth. Be your authentic self, because that is exactly what the, our planet needs, and go forth and shine as brightly as you can and fashion a beautiful life for yourself. Love and as always, angel blessings. And I look so forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm.